Today's video is going to be a longer one because whenever it comes to welding and metal work, YouTubers seem to love to skip most of it. So if you want to see less, use the chapters. Metal chops would be nice for this, but this is not a job I want to spend an extra many hundreds on. That's what we're working on. I cut this the wrong way. Well, I can use that for something else. Yeah, so this should be able to go about like that. That's one side. Hey, we got it right. And we should have close to an inch at the top. We've got three quarters, so I'm okay with that. That one's actually pretty good. Well, that can burn for a minute. So we do have a bit of extra at the top and the left and the right. It seems like it fits. So this angle iron here, the whole point of it being angle iron is that uh, it can come and sit like this. And then the weather stripping sits between the, the this part of the frame and here. The chain appeared because I was trying to get the frame perfectly squared. I never did. So I left out all that effort. Trying to bridge a flat 1 8 inch gap is a little bit tricky though. I'm adding a second piece of angle iron facing in on both of the sides. This will give me something to screw the plywood to later. Well, still fits. As with the sides, the top and bottom needed support for plywood, but they couldn't be continuous pieces because I also needed to have two by fours running top to bottom to have something to screw the sheet metal to. I told you at the start I was going to show you all the work and grinding down all the tack welds on the surfaces that would have plywood over them is definitely something most YouTubers would skip. This primer is expensive. This is like 20 bucks a can here. The fun thing is how much the wind direction is changing. It'll be that way and then this way and that way and this way and it's just, I can't be out of the way, I'm gonna get hosed. Like I said, good enough trailer, not good job trailer. 30 minutes to paint over top, but 10 minutes to touch. So we're getting kind of two coats on this, and if the heavy spots there don't dry in 10 minutes, then I don't care. Uh, let's see, what does it weigh? It's probably around 100 pounds. Well, something happened.
that is no longer straight so yeah I want to fix that gap but first we deal with this which mostly means welding an additional piece of this on and this is just to keep strength vertically not this way I'm tracing out where the bar was going to go because I had to grind the paint off so that I could actually weld the metal to new bare metal. And then of course I have to go back later and repaint it. I don't know it. if I should be glad or sad about how easily that paint came off, but that's what it did. My rear bumper is not totally straight. It had a lot of bends in it, so I used the clamp to make sure that the new bar would be as close as possible to the original bumper. The heat is what messed up this. So let's get my straight edge. We'll see if we can jump this into uh, straight again. So you can see around here and around here, the whole thing bent down. You know what? We're going to leave that for now. Nice. And just a little bit on this end. That'll do. That's good enough for this trailer. I had stopped tacking the new bar onto the bumper because I was worried that I would have to actually end up cutting the frame and re-welding it once it was straight. But because I was able to jump on it to get it straight again, I was able to come back and finish up this tack weld. This one's not great. That's when I was saying I felt like I'm missing. It's tough because I'm trying to put 3 16 up against uh, like 1 16 inch thick. Missed a bit there for sure. This one and this one. Not my best work. I like completely missed the bar on this one. <laughs> Kinda miss it on this one. I know these aren't very pretty welds, but I also know at the same time that not every weld has to be very pretty for it to be very functional. I do definitely allow myself a lot of extra leeway when it comes to how pretty the welds aren't because this is flux core and I'm not going to pay for gas. Pick up right. We could have this right up close to this edge. I don't know, I still feel like spacing it out a bit might be wise, because otherwise this point that turns is gonna rub. Well, if I have a piece of aluminum tucked in behind, that'll give it one millimeter of space. We're not getting anywhere by not doing anything, so let's get to doing a thing.
Like, that's not gonna just be breaking off. I definitely want to get like twice as much material in there if I can. So I got a, a reasonable chunk there and there. I mean, between six of those, I gotta think it'll probably be okay for, for at least a test open and close. I made a trailer. If you wanna see all the steps that go into installing the plywood, I have a whole video dedicated to that. Like I said before, I had to rip down some 2x4s so that I would be able to have something to attach the sheet metal to when the time came. And catching that thing if it comes down is even more sketch. That's about what we're looking for. I did end up having some pretty short days because I was also doing open houses at the same time. I have to go through a full two by four on flat. Okay, so we're through. It's getting there. These holes might need a little bit of fussing. But generally speaking, that's how that'll operate. Yeah, this, this right here, that's this two feet. So my holes aren't perfectly centered. Uh, hope that'll wear in. We can put some grease on that later too. But it works. I need to put supports in so I have something to attach the hasps to. These are my hasps. Just a hair under. I'm okay with just a hair under. That should absolutely not split. You done, bud? Done like that? Now the bummer part is I am going to have a bolt nub sticking up the top of the, uh, the deck, but they'll be fairly close to the edge. You know what, that's not too bad to close. I did it, I have a working trailer. So next thing is, lower it back down and drill out the, uh, the hasp holes. That certainly, certainly, suddenly looks pretty okay. I'm, I'm pretty confident to say this is 200 pounds now.
You did it. Okay, so I list drilled through and more punch through, but that's okay. I'll accept that. It'll still be putting this about as far into the corner as I can get it. I knew I'd want to install the door spring eventually to make it easier to lift and lower. So I got these eye hooks installed while I had easy access. Pretty good. That should do. So then this comes through here and we scrape off half of its jacket as we go through the freshly cut metal hole and leave a little bit extra there. If we mount this on the lower side, then we can still um, mount the light here. As with the plywood installation, if you want a more detailed video on how to install the sheet metal, I have a whole other video dedicated just to that. Well, we are close. Should work. One thing that wasn't in the previous sheet metal video was how I would deal with any uncovered edges. So here I just slobbered on a lot of caulk. Can I use my big Sharpie? No. <laughs> You're gonna use the end of it. Not gonna... The final weather stripping around the door was just some D-shaped foam weather stripping. I primed the metal with the same adhesive primer I used for the sheet metal. All right, let's see how much more difficult this is to close now. Here we go. <sighs> oh, that's a squish now. That looks fairly passable. Still need to get the drip edge on the top. It is quite a bit of squish now. It's a bit straighter. really ugly along there. We might come back with a razor blade once it dries a bit. While the welding I had done was good enough for a few cycles, I really wanted to get a lot more material on the hinges. The one time I actually take care to do anything about my personal safety, you guys grief me about sleep stream.
Well, they're not pretty, but I think they'll do. And no, we are not gonna fuss this over spray. This is the good enough trailer, not the good job trailer. Here we go. We should be pretty good for rest now. Yes, I did have a couple of very short work days here, but a lot of the time on those days was spent running around trying to get the parts that I needed to do the garage door spring. And I said garage door spring because you actually use garage door spring parts for trailer door springs. Oh yeah, it's, that's some good goops right there. Yeah, this looks like crap, but it's weather protected now. So whatever. I don't know if the place that I bought the parts from was just trying to give me some runaround or if they were just trying to cut me a deal on the cheapest leftover parts possible, but I had to do a fair amount of refabrication to get the hardware to fit. Well, that is going to need a bit of grinding, but it's on there. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I've never really held a small piece like that after a weld. And people have talked about cooling, and I've experienced the cooling. But that time, I actually got to feel it pull in. We might wire brush this after, but as far as just, do I have a weld? Yeah, we're good there. So I think they switched the drums because, or you get different drums with, uh, with trailer cables because look, there's follows the direction of the drum and it goes under and mine goes over. Yeah, they're putting it under on the trailer. Yeah, which means that you would switch the drum sides. And I'm just wondering if that will work with um, the direction of wind. Cause as that goes down, it's gonna pull it this way, which will be loosening that. So we could flip this to the other side and just install it backwards and wrong. But as long as the winding is fine, that's all I care about. So if we have it so that it comes under, then as it goes down, it's winding this way. And winding that way is tightening the spring, which is what you want. So we could just reverse this to the other side and put this on the other side. Then this goes down and put this on the right hand side. And then that goes down. So then you want to draw an imaginary line between that hook and this point, and I want you to have that more to the right and further back towards me. That looks like it'll clear. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we can get full bearing on both the studs here. So one of the things we have to do is put everything up all at once, yes. because there isn't gonna be enough room to get one end in, slide it through further, and then get the other end in. Might have to drill new hole. You only have to get one bolt in. No, because this is what keeps the spring from unspringing. This is what holds the spring tension. And what's it attached to? The spring attaches to this, okay. and then this end attaches <clears throat> to the rod. Gotcha. Does this have to be lined up like that, or can it be at an angle? It can be at an angle, and none of the angles work. No. So I'm just gonna pick that, that to that, make it bigger. There's the drill. Okay, here I am drilling a hole. You know, I'd say that hole I drilled is a pretty good hole. Okay. Good, good diameter, good location. Good 
Did they come with the loops on the ends already clamped? Yep. Excellent. I do want to check real quick and make sure that they're long enough. Okay. Uh, take that to the ground. Your end. Where the door will be. Ooh. Barely long enough. But we're good. Easy breezy. Ask them how much they pay to have you locked in the trailer overnight. <laughs> I do have a bucket. Now, if you've never seen this. So four turns, four quarters is one turn. Yeah. It's supposed to be about a foot. So that's one, two. Yeah. I want to not be in front of these things. Three, four. How many did you want? 11. They do make apparently solid ones that are also keyed. And I'm just like, oh, that sounds nice. Cause yeah, I don't like how those indent. What does keyed mean? It's got one flat side. Ah, oh, okay. Instead of a hollow pipe. Can you get the two by four block down here? that up here. Yeah. So we're at about eight. You really only need the lift at the beginning. No, you need it. You need it tight all the way. So your tight. stuff doesn't unspool. Tight. Yes. But you don't need the lift. Okay, here's the scary part. Do you want me to go and see what the door's like? Yep. You're gonna go see what the door's like. <clears throat> okay, well undo that. So it's definitely lighter but we need more spins to get that tension in. This is why a solid keyed one would be nice because these actually deform the bar. Yeah. And when you think it's loose, it's not. It's yeah. just loose in that one spot. Vice grips. Well, it's not flipping up on its own. No, but it might go fast at the end. Yes. Although the Ooh. That's that's right there. Okay, this is where a handle would be good. Um, you're going to have to stop it from slamming. <clears throat> you got it? Still got tension? Okay, yeah. see ya. There's a bucket. Okay, I'm gonna take it back one round. Basically, we have to find the balance point between when it's not lifting itself up on its own. I can get a handle in later whenever, <coughs> um, yeah. but it has to keep tension and not be lifting it. Oh, undoing these is actually more scary than doing them up. Okay, 
so now it's not just lifting it. We're still single finger operation and it's still gonna fly up at you. That's a lot better. Like this is not flying at you now, no. but watch your, your yeah. drums, make sure it keeps tension. Yeah. It's all yours. In position, but just a little wobbly. Okay, so let's put half a turn back on. This is how I raise the ramp door. Now that is trying to get away from me. I got it. I think it's okay. So how does this go if there's no one inside it? It's creaky as all get out, but well, without a handle, it'll be like this. So, like once it gets up there, it's not gonna like crush your fingers. No, it's not. And then until I have a handle, you know what? That's not bad. No, it's not at all. 